Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick and today we are doing IXL D6 which is coming up with proofs that involve parallel lines. Okay so first and foremost when we're doing two column proofs uh, these IXL problems kind of give you a variety of different reasons to put in there. So these proofs are made up of two columns. We have the statement which is a, uh, um, a truth about the uh, figure in front of you and the reason uh, would be the mathematical justification for why that statement works and so a lot of these are actually going to correspond to the angle pair relationships that we've been talking about so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to share with you kind of a list of common uh, reasons for the proofs you're going to be seeing um, pretty much every time you see a proof it's going to start with a given so we go back here uh, you see that they give you an initial statement, so that's what we are believing is true. And then from there, we just take steps uh, to eventually get to the end part of our proof, whatever we are trying to prove, right? So we're in the end, in the end for this problem, we're trying to prove the angle RTU is congruent with V uh, WY, and each step in the statement is getting closer and closer to logically prove uh, this exact thing right here. Okay, so given. Corresponding angle postulates uh, that if these uh, if we have two parallel lines that means the two Angles that go with them are corresponding. So two corresponding angles uh, that since we know before um, are congruent if the two lines uh, they are interacting with are parallel and then the converse to the corresponding angles postulate is if these two angles are congruent that means the two lines that are interacting with them are parallel. So it's just a reverse of the logic over here. If these are parallel, then these are congruent. If these are congruent, then these are parallel. Okay. Next, we have a linear pair. Um, a plus B equals 180. Uh, supplementary angles. Uh, angle A plus angle B has to equal 180. And those two, uh, those angles can be anywhere on the figure. They don't have to be right next to each other. Sub substitution. Uh, when you take uh, a value or a certain angle and you substitute it in for another because it's equal. That's just using mathematical substitution. Vertical angle postulate. When you have vertical angles and you know the vertical angles are going to be uh, congruent or the same. Uh, using algebra, just anytime you are uh, basically writing out an algebraic expression and uh, performing some sort of algebraic step. So you are um, maybe adding things together and multiplying things together, something like that. Uh, transitive property is just the logic of, well, if A equals B and B equals C, therefore A equals C. So you're just kind of using step-by-step um, uh, -step logic to say that A, B, and C are all congruent. If this, and then also if this, then this has to be the case. Uh, congruence is just that, well, A and B are going to be congruent because they're the same measures. They're equal, so you're not going to see that one too often. Equality is just... Uh, these two values are equal. The only difference between congruence and equality is congruence uh, is just you can you state uh, two angles, two specific angles like angle A or angle B that are congruent. Equality is the uh, degree value. So 80 degrees is equal to 80, 80 degrees. So these two angles are equal because they are both 80 degrees. And lastly is the reflexive property, which again you will not see too often, but it's just stating that um, an angle is equal or congruent to itself. Okay, uh, complete the proof that the measure for angle SVU plus the measure for angle RSV equals 180, all right? So we're just gonna go to the statement right before the one we're gonna prove. And it says the measure for angle QSR, QSR, so right here, plus the angle or the measure for angle RSV, RSV, so this angle here, they, add up to 180 because the reasoning is they're a linear pair and they sum up to 180. Okay. So then it goes that SVU, SVU, so this angle right here where V is, plus RSV, RSV, so this angle right here, these two angles right here are going to be uh, adding up to 180. So if we go back here and we figure out why that was, did we use the algebra? No. Did we use the reflexive property? Well, if this equals this, then therefore this equals this. Not really. Substitution, are we substituting one thing in for another perhaps? 
And then are we using the transitive property here? No, we're probably going to go toward substitution again uh, because you are substituting one uh, of these measures in for another. So measure QSR um, is being substituted with measure for SVU. You're retaining the measure for RSV and RSV for both. So we're going to be doing substitution again. Good. Okay. Um, QS is parallel with TV. So QS and TV. Complete the proof that RUV is congruent to QRU. All right. So uh, it is given that the two lines are parallel. Okay, that's the reason here. And so the next step is the uh, angle of RUV, RUV is congruent with PRS, PRS. So this angle is congruent with this angle. How do we know that? Well, we already know they're parallel, right? So if we go over here, well, let's go back for a sec. We know that these two look cor like they're corresponding angles. We know corresponding angles are going to be uh, congruent. If we go back here, we either have corresponding angles postulate or the converse uh, to the postulate. So since they already gave us that uh, the lines are parallel and therefore we can prove the angles are congruent, we're going to go with the corresponding angle postulate uh, compared to the converse where they give us that these two are equal and therefore these two lines are parallel. So it's just going to be the corresponding angle postulate. Cool. Good. Okay, uh, next. So RUT is congruent with SRU. So RUT is congruent with SRU, SRU. So these two are congruent, and that's given. All right. Um, PQR, P, or sorry, PRQ, so this angle here, and SRU, SRU. These two are congruent, it's saying, and what is the reason? Okay, well, why are these two congruent? What's the angle relationship? Well, they're vertical angles. So we're going to be looking for the vertical angle theorem. All right, and you're already up to 60. For my class, this is where we stop. Um, but of course, you can feel free to keep going. This is when they start to give you more than one reason um, to input. And you can work your way from there. Okay, that's where I'm going to end the video. Study hard, take care, and see you for the next IXL tutorial. Goodbye.